The, take this bass, will you? Oh, sure. Take it. Um, <laughs> uh, this is HBO, the home box office. It's sixth, sixth annual, sixth annual Young Comedian Show. And we're very pleased. Uh, set the bass down somewhere, Tony. Okay. Just, okay. You just, you want to hold it for a while? Yeah. Okay, and we're, really, we're really pleased that they asked, they thought enough of us to ask us to host the, the sixth annual, the sixth annual, this is very important, the sixth annual Young yes. Comedians. We feel qualified we, we feel to host this, host this show because we, we too, were once two young comedians. <laughs> so we know what it feels like to be two young comedians. That's right. So that's why we're qualified. I'm glad you brought that up. Now, this show may, this show may look very simple to you all. It's, it's, uh, it's, um, it's uh, not a big production show. It's on location. This is live, of course, uh, live at the Roxy Sunset Strip. Los Angeles, California. But shows like this take a lot of planning. These are very, very difficult shows to produce. Tom, do you ever wonder how many hours, how many man hours it takes to put together a show like this? Well, anyway, there is so many... <laughs> there's so many... I, I didn't know I was going to be asked that question. Did you see? No, I didn't, I didn't know. I wasn't ready for that. I, was, I didn't really... <laughs> well, give me a chance. Lisa. How, what was the question? How many... How many uh, how many man hours does it take to put it to go together yeah, a show like this? I don't think you understand. I wasn't ready for that. I, was, I thought maybe a metric question or something. Like metrics. <laughs> okay, let me, just let me take I a guess. Let me take a guess. Okay. 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 How many yeah. man hours does it take to put a show together like this? Say, okay. It's off the top of my head. Um, top of my head. I want to win. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, Sixty man. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, Seven hundred man hours. No. Okay. Uh, Eight weeks. Eight weeks. Uh, you eight don't hours understand the question. Is it eight, is no! It? You don't understand the question. No, That's no, what no, I'm no. trying to tell you. Just relax. That was a rhetorical question. Yeah, but don't you... I, I'm trying to a give you an answer. You I said, don't... Hey, a rhetorical question does not require an answer. You see? It just makes you wonder. <laughs> okay, tonight's show is going to have a number of young comedians young funny people on it. Tonight's show will have some young funny people as opposed to older funny people. And we decided to ask these young people to write their own introductions for us to read. Now we're not that familiar with their work, we're busy doing things. And we want like to make sure that the introductions were right for these, right. because they're very talented comedians. We're going to laugh yes. a lot tonight and we want to make sure that their introductions was, were the way that they would we want, want them, them to be introduced. That's right, Tommy, to be like we were introduced, there's two young schmucks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So we didn't want to make that mistake. Well, so at least they were half right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Wait a minute, that doesn't sound right. I'm the younger brother. Uh, anyway, this, this young comedian wrote this introduction to me. He, he wrote, and uh, I'm quoting, it says, Dear Dick, Dear Dickie, Dear Dickie, will you please inform the audience that I am the bright young comedian you and your brother met in New York City in 1978. I don't, I don't remember you, meeting any uh, bright young comedians in 19... I met... Uh, 1962, I met a real bright young comedian. Well, I, that doesn't matter, I don't recall. No, I, I recall this. I recall this bright young comedian. He's, he says, to continue, you guys said if you still had your TV show, you would have used me. But no. You went and blew the whole thing and got your ass thrown off the air leaving me to slog along alone in the treacherous world of stand-up comedy. I remember it. Now you remember it. <laughs> I want you to tell them you asked me on the show tonight so you could apologize in front of the whole nation. Do you, have, you really okay. want to do? Sure. Do you feel like you should? Sure. Ladies and gentlemen. Well, I said, it's great to, it gives me great oh, pleasure. Okay. Ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure and apologizing for this next performance. <laughs> Will you please welcome Jerry Steinfeld. A prize. Jerry Steinfeld. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. I love those guys. Don't you? <laughs> nice to be here tonight. It's a pleasure to be here tonight. It's a beautiful night. I just got back to uh, Los Angeles today. I'm pretty excited about it. Nice weather we're having. Weather never changes here that much. You notice that's always the same. And weather reports are always the same. They always show you the same things on the weather report because they don't really know. 
So they try and cover it up. They show you the maps. Highs, lows, fronts. And then my favorite part, the satellite photo. This is really helpful. A photograph of the Earth from 10,000 miles away. Can you tell if you should take a sweater or not from that shot? I gotta buy some pajamas. You know, you have to readjust a little bit. Pajamas have gotta be the world's funniest clothes. Who designed them to look that way, like a little tiny suit? You notice the little collar buttoned down. And a breast pocket. There's a useful item. Is anybody using the breast pocket on your pajamas? What, do you put a pen in there, you roll over in the middle of the night, you kill yourself. Now, I also bought something that I had never in my life owned before. You may not believe it. Slippers. Never had them. Never had slippers. I'm looking at these things. There's, well, basically, there seems like two, two kinds you can get. You can get the slide in. These are like emergency slippers, I guess. You could set these up by the side of the bed case of a fire. Hey, you pick them right up and get you know, you can really save time with those. Or you can get these slippers which have backs, kind of like shoes. Which, if you have pajamas, looks like a suit. This completes the effect. Now you get yourself a flannel briefcase, you're all set. <laughs> you oversleep, go right into work. There's no problem. I bought some socks, which I've had before. But I'll tell you, no, you don't, you don't inspect these articles as you buy them. Think about socks of all articles of clothing. Socks, more drive, more ambition than any other thing. How many times you do a big laundry? You go to the dryer, you take out your socks, you count them up, one of them got out. <laughs> he escaped. He took off on his own. What are his chances out there? I don't think they're good. Sometimes you see a dirty sock by the street there. Did you ever see one? Just one sock. It's a sock that didn't make it. I don't know how they escape. They have their own ideas. You know, sometimes... So we catch them, sometimes they'll hang on a sweater. That's like a freight car to them, you know. It's just... And he slips off and he... And they try and get out. It's... I'm very impressed with that. You know what else is funny about socks? They always give you that little, when you buy them, that little plastic hanger on the top. I love that. They always give that to you like you've got some use for it. Just go in the pajama pocket? Where does that go? Does anybody use the little hanger? Anybody have a tiny sock closet at home? Tiny little doors, you slide them open. Pick out what you're wearing the next day. <laughs> I don't know. Shopping, it's a great challenge. Thank you. <laughs> Little stray laugh. They're building a new mall down here. I know everyone's excited about it. I'm a little tired of malls. I don't know about you. Every mall is the same. Every mall has a piano store. I have never seen anybody in there buying one. You go to the mall, you've got 20 bucks, 30 bucks. You get a book, pair of shoes. You ever see anybody go, hey, before we leave, let's get one of those pianos. <laughs> They're only a million dollars. I like to go in the greeting card stores. I think they're interesting because they kind of, greeting cards really reflect, you know, what people are saying to each other. The style of the greeting cards, the communications. There's a section now in every greeting card store I've been in lately where they have greeting cards with no printing on the inside, though. <laughs> See me? I mean, this is a comment. No words, no message, nothing. It's like Hallmark is saying, hey, we don't know what to tell her. <laughs> you think of something, pal. For 65 cents, I don't want to get involved. I don't know what you're doing over there. Then they have those greeting cards with the couples on the front. They photograph them, you know? These hazy focus people. They're always having picnics. There's always a tree, a pond. Who are these people? I don't know them. I don't want them on my card either. What am I going to write inside there anyway? Here's another couple having a better relationship than us. So I went to the post office to get some stamps for the car. This all fits together. <laughs> I was at the post office today. That's a, that's a true thing. And I'm waiting online now. What is the thing in the post office with the wanted posters on the walls? You're standing there. You're going to mail a package. They're showing you killers, murderers, thieves. 
What do they want us to do about it at the post office? Write the guy? <laughs> do people rip these off the wall, go up to the counter? Yeah, give me a book of stamps and a search warrant. I'm going after this guy. <laughs> I've had it up to here with his activities. <laughs> I'll tell you my main question about these wanted posters on the wall. Why didn't they hold on to this guy when they're taking his picture? <laughs> bothering us for <laughs> amazing things like that that's that's what life is all about that's what my act is all about <laughs> amazing things i want to go to the guinness museum because i love the guinness book of world's records i love these amazing things great records that people set some of them not that you would want to have of you for yourself you know i mean have you ever seen that guy who's got the record for fattest man in the world bob hughes the fattest man in the world 1400 pounds Ladies and gentlemen, the man has let himself go. <laughs> Come on, Bob, have a salad here. Do something. <laughs> I, I used to feel bad talking about the guy, you know what I mean? I used to think maybe I would offend somebody in the audience, but then I thought about it. You could be in the audience, you could weigh a thousand pounds and still go, he's not talking about me. <laughs> this is a man with a serious weight problem. I've got it under control. <laughs> but 1,400, it's just, it's too much. Bob, wherever you are, if you're in the world, go on a diet. Take off a couple hundred pounds. <laughs> but you realize 200 pounds on this guy doesn't even make a dent. <laughs> and if you were a friend of his, what would you say to him? You know, you look great, Bob. <laughs> what are you down to, 1,200 now? <laughs> you're a rail, baby. <laughs> And what would he possibly say back to you? But you know I feel terrific. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good night. Very Tony Kirksey. Very signed to him. Very signed to Right. That was, that's good. Hey, that's any, good, any, 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 any Italians here? Yeah. What for? Italian right there? Italian? Yeah, I got one for you. No, Tommy, this isn't the time for This only take a second. Tommy, I'm this not is gonna, for young comedians. That, I'm not... just going to take a second. This is for the Italians. This, you this, I got it. This is funny. We mangia la porta. Mangia la porta. What does it mean? It means eat the door. <laughs> it's not funny. Funny. It's funny. It's, it's a classic Italian punchline. It's uh, eat the door. Mangia la porta, eat the door. It's, uh, this room was filled with Italians. You'd hear a roar that you wouldn't believe. <laughs> Even Sicilians will smile at that one. It's like, Mangia la porta, eat the door. It's a classic punchline. Well, what's the joke? It's a rhetorical punchline, Dickie. You say that in Italian. This makes you wonder. Just introduce the act. Okay, well, as we said, each of the, each of the, of the comedians wrote their own introductions, and I'd like to uh, read, read this. This. Uh, this no, out, dear, out front, out front, right over there. Dear, start again. Dearest Tommy, please tell them that I am the only woman on the Young Comedian Show this evening. She's the only woman on on the Young Comedian Show this evening. <laughs> but things have been going well. Mm -hmm. I've made six of I made made sex appearances on the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. What'd you say? No, what was that say? I thought it said uh, six. It says sex appearances on the Johnny. Sex. No, read, read it. Read it again. I've made sex appearances on the no, Tonight no, Show with Johnny no, Carson. Read it. it says I made six appearances. Oh, yeah, that's right. I made six appearances on the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. I was born in England but moved to Australia as a child and grew up down under. <laughs> When I finished school, I came to America and started performing. Mm -hmm. P.S. I didn't have to sleep with a producer to get the show, but I sure enjoyed you, Tom. I don't, I don't believe that. Why don't you just introduce the lady, will you, Tom? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a very funny lady, Maureen Murphy. Let's hear it. Maureen Murphy. <laughs> Thank you. 
I have really discovered something wonderful. I have discovered these romantic Harlequin Gothic novels that all the women are reading. And I'm really into this one. And this is so exciting. I mean, just listen to this. His pulsating lips met her throbbing shoulders as his gyrating fingers pressed against her pounding thighs. She could feel his pulsating, heaving, throbbing, beating pulse. <laughs> pulsating like a heaving, throbbing, swelling shaft of thrusting sunlight. <laughs> Have you read this? Then as he put on his throbbing trousers and adjusted his pounding suspenders, he heavingly said, I still respect you, Lady Diana. <laughs> I didn't like uh, Princess Diana, but I was raised in Australia, and I tried to explain to my mother that I wanted to be an actress. I said, Mother, I want to learn to cry real tears. I want to be able to show great emotion for someone I don't really care for. She said, become a housewife. <laughs> My mother, she always wanted me to be married all in white and all virginal. But I don't think a woman should be a virgin when she gets married. I think she should have at least one other disappointing experience. Because <laughs> there's a lot of unhappy marriages in Hollywood. Like this one woman friend of mine told me she hated her husband so much that when he died, she had him cremated blended with marijuana and smoked him. <laughs> she said, that's the best he's made me feel in years. <laughs> but even dating is different. See, in Australia, a bloke will take you out to dinner, and if you don't come across, he won't ask you out again. It's different in Los Angeles. Here, you don't get dinner. <laughs> they want to take you right back to their apartment and not even buy you a cup of tea. In Australia, making love is something rich and beautiful. It's worth a cup of tea. <laughs> Only one man called me up and said, would you like to have dinner before I take you back to my apartment? I said, that would be lovely. He said, I'll pick you up about nine. You should have finished eating by then. <laughs> and then he called me baby all night. He went, hey, baby. Prove to me that you're my baby, baby. So I did. I dribbled on his shirt. <laughs> I met him in a disco. And you know the kind of man you meet in a disco? The kind that blow dry their chest hair? <laughs> They're so vain with all the mirrors, the way they look at themselves while they dance. I went home with a man I met in a disco once, and there was mirrors all over his bedroom. And he finally said, I want to make love. Would you mind leaving? <laughs> I just wish men were more romantic, like they were in the old days, like bring a woman roses. My mother would always say, a rose is the perfect symbol of romance. It dies after a few days. <laughs> its pretty petals fall off, and all you're left with is the ugly, prickly thing. <laughs> so I was brought up Catholic, and we were told that if we touched certain parts of our body, we'd go blind. Now, when I came here, I could see that wasn't true, because most baseball players have very good eyesight. <laughs> the umpires that are blind. <laughs> but I wasn't told anything growing up. I used to think birth control was giving birth slowly. <laughs> and that mini pads were very small apartments. <laughs> See, we, we were never told about the curse. The curse was slang for time of the month. And when I first got it, I saw the mummy's curse on television. I thought the poor thing has it so bad, it's banished from head to toe. <laughs> and I think women are so independent. Well, there's even a woman in Los Angeles that owns her own football team. 
Georgia Rosenblum Frontier. What a career for a woman. She can go out in the field, watch them all bend over in the line of scrimmage and say, just think, I own every tight end on that field. <laughs> and you know they're going to have an all-woman football team next season? No tight ends, all wide receivers. <laughs> Women are so independent that one day perhaps we'll have a woman president. Don't you think a woman president would be great? <laughs> well, she would, she would save the country money because she would only make half of what a man president makes. <laughs> And even with Billy and Jimmy Carter gone, there'd still be two boobs in the White House. <laughs> but you ever notice that when a woman gets to have an important position, they always say things like, she slept her way to the top. But they never say that about men. Senator Hayakawa, he slept his way to the top. <laughs> that politicians sometimes use lines on the country that men use on women? Like, trust me, go all the way with me and everything will be all right? And you believe them and nine months later the country's in trouble? <laughs> I think they should elect politicians every year just like the Academy Awards. And I think Jane Fonda could be in charge. Nominees for Best Politician are... Jerry Brown, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. <laughs> Jerry Ford, Which Way Is Up? <laughs> Senator Hayakawa, For Coma. <laughs> Alexander Haig, Raging Bull. <laughs> James Watt, To Kill a Mockingbird. <laughs> Teddy Kennedy, the goodbye girl. <laughs> All right, Teddy Kennedy, a bridge too far. <laughs> and Ronald Reagan, heaven can wait. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm.